there's a great difference whether I focus on something or whether something focuses me. <laughs> Let me say, uh, um, Julia's expression focuses me. I'm feeling, I'm, I'm focused by what she, how she was a moment ago and how she's now, you know? In other words, it arouses my attention. It arouses my full being. It, I am there for it. It's not that I do something, but something affects me. Yeah? This totality which is me. In other words, I, I don't just hear with my ears. Uh, what you say, what you say, uh, arouses my <laughs> battle capacities, if you want to. I'm there for it. This is always a, a total. And this is what I like to tell you. work hard and I have to give you something for it. <laughs> but it's very deep in you and there's no question uh, at all that it is there, you know. So in other words, I don't... <laughs> Most people focus on things and from that comes the efforts. I do something. But in the moment in which I am a being, you say, suddenly, oh, the sunset, oh, oh, the dirty water, oh, you know, in my bathroom, it's always dripping, all the time, boom, boom, boom. But how often it is, it's the water, and I can't get it quiet. It's all the time having its effect on me. <laughs> and that does not necessarily fit out my life. <laughs> but anyhow, in the moment in which uh, somebody um, discovers something, it happens because something arouses the attention the attention, the full uh, inner uh, reactivity. This is what you can see with, with most babies, you know. And you can see on Michael too. You know, he has not lost it yet, fortunately. <laughs> and we can win it again. Okay? So you can become, <laughs> according to Jesus, like children again. Children again. <laughs> so here it is. Think of something very true. <laughs> so an un. Nothing is written on the page, but the page is written, it's put in. How do you like it? It's not so easy. And very simple. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
So when all the um, unnecessary efforts of the mind stop, which happened, for instance, has been happening, that's why so many people took to drugs, you know, which quieten the mind. And then the possibility to perceive is enormous. And not so effort at all. It just falls with its impact on one. And I remember that one of my students who later on uh, now didn't quite use our work in the right way. Uh, when he came for the first time uh, to a workshop which I gave in uh, Los Angeles, uh, he, he was introduced to me by a psychologist and he said, the psychologist said to me, this man has been paid to be a, a guinea pig for uh, experiments with drugs. And uh, he came and he said that he had more than a hundred experiments with drugs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, and he had become very nervous. Sorry. <laughs> How good. <laughs> so that man calls quiet. <laughs> so when he came to the work, he, he began to weep and he said, It's just as when I took this and this, you know, only so much warmer and more homely, as he called it. Mm -hmm. And he fell in love with the work and misused it. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, you, <laughs> I say this. You hear better, you see better, you feel better, you uh, become sharper in your perception. And the quieter the mind is, the more possibilities do we have for it. So that's the background, you know, the basis, the uh, potential which we gradually uncover, hopefully. And in this process of gradual waking up more, you know, we make a, these attempts, we use these attempts in order to sharpen our uh, possibilities. In some way, it's really like a, scientific experimentation. And you can't go places emotionally when you are uh, finding out something new, you know. It's a very sharp, very clear, focused work. But what you see or what you try out arouses your interest so much that you don't have to focus on it, but you are being focused by it. Does that make sense? When you have a patient and uh, this patient, when you really feel what this, the situation of your patient is, you know, then um, what he tells you and how he looks and what he, how he reacts uh, arouses your interest so much that you can catch up with them, isn't it? Sure. So you don't have to, you know, do this, you don't have to stare at him, you don't have to contract your, your lungs in order to have a, a lot of possibility to, answer, to cope with it. He can 
all open for it. And the more open you are, um, in this um, being with what at this moment is happening, the more you will find. There's no effort involved. Only, I would say, purity. You are unused material. You are new for whatever it is which can about and attack to change. Does it interest you? I would like to give you an example. Um, Toscanini. I was in many rehearsals with Toscanini. And he often played with the orchestra things which he has been uh, performing hundreds of times. <laughs> so I happen to have uh, friends who were close to Toscanini. What, he say, what uh, they said was that he gets up in the morning at 5 o'clock goes to the piano, he has his score, he plays every single instrument. He sings to it. He feels out with the score entirely new. Then he go to the, goes to the rehearsal and he hears every instrument, how they fit into the world, you know. And often lies on his knees begging this and this person to listen to what he is speaking. So my aunt, uh, my cousin was uh, involved in this uh, performances of Toscanini, and my aunt came uh, to these rehearsals in um, in, um, in Austria, I think. Uh, where was it? Where we first met? Salzburg, yeah. So he would uh, change his shirt four times during the rehearsal. Uh, uh, and my aunt said to him, uh, but Maestro, you knew Cosi uh, Fantuto or something, whatever he was being, you knew this score, you knew you have played it so often, son, son. Why do you make such, why do you work so hard? So he looked at her very coldly and he said, Madam, I'm asking for my musicians the best. I must do my best. Another one of my students was a pianist. And she used to go to Milano uh, to the conservatory to teach piano during the summer. And at the, uh, in the neighborhood of Milano was the resting place of the most famous circus in Europe. 
and uh, she she was very fascinated with our ball playing. But uh, are you sleeping? No. So there was in this uh, circus was one man who was famous all over Europe and America, Rastelli, a juggler. He juggled with and everything. He was a sensation. So she heard of Rastelli there and she went to see him. And they said, uh, he is practicing. So she came and, and he was playing with boys, doing all kind of experiments with the boys. And uh, she said, um, could I be your student? So he accepted her. And she said, you know, Charlotte, what he did? He did exactly that with me, what you do. <laughs> so, in other words, holding the ball, throwing the ball, you know, so all this as a question of a growing, growing reactivity, you know. A ball, flying ball, a rolling ball is such a fantastic experience which can f focus all our possibilities. So she also asked us, Telly, why do you practice every day of your resting time for two or three hours? And he said, if I wouldn't do that, I couldn't, I couldn't be with Rastelli. <laughs> so I say this also with a little, um, yeah. Comparison to you. It's very nice that we work how many? Seven or eight times a week. It's also very nice that we're here. It's very nice that we have a swimming pool, good weather, automobiles. There's, there's a good cafe in the neighborhood. <laughs> and I don't know what, uh, it's all very nice. But uh, who is really working after our classes and what we are doing? Who is sharpening his knives in daily life? and perhaps silently for himself, somewhere in a corner. I'm asking this, <laughs> with a little, uh, 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 questioner. It could be that everything you do, you could feel this is it, and could experiment with it, could uh, become more and more uh, involved in what you are doing. So it would be, uh, this would be one way of doing it. The other is really to continue what we are doing here. Both would, I can only recommend highly. <laughs> so in other words, this totality, this uh, unused, hopefully, new, hopefully, uh, screen, House uh, organisms 
would come in touch with all kinds of things which uh, create uh, attention, attention, and would react to it. And you could feel to which degree this is possible and what, are the, con what the consequences are. So who is interested in it? And f who feels that I'm giving a pep talk? <laughs> so uh, would you come up to standing? So I learned the fact that you are now with your feet touching the carpet could uh, renew you also. And do it uh, leave your head out. How does it feel, this carpet? How does it affect you in your head? Your breathing. Your arms, through your back. In the way you uh, see things. <laughs> and this question of how breathing is affected is a very Interesting question. Is it possible that breathing also can be innocent, not made? Maybe a tiny little wave of something. <laughs> Maybe some irregularity. Maybe whatever. Not let me breathe. <laughs> Can breathing be uh, focused by the carpet under your feet and around your feet? Is there such a thing like an entirely new connection, no matter whether the air goes out or comes in? How does the cap influence your legs? Are they free for it? A big way. Uh, is there such a thing like a weakness for the carpet through your back. And uh, maybe changes towards it. The distance of your shoulders from the carpet has your attention. <laughs> I 
and would you uh, start to <coughs> feel what it is when you would become ready that your hand would go up into the air. What happens in breathing, what happens in your arm, what happens in your head when you, let me see your right hand wants to go up into the air. When you feel it is so far, let it go up. does it feel in you when you would be ready to let your hand be there for quite a while? And how does it feel when you Become ready to go a little higher, but not to it yet. <laughs> and allow it. <laughs> and become ready to go a little lower. Not yet. <laughs> I would feel it. And allow it. And how does it feel when you become ready, but not allowed yet, to let your arm fall? What happens? What happens? When you can't stand it any longer, let it fall. How does it feel in sending? You can feel the effect of the falling. Yeah. Now, would you, it was the other, uh, would you feel how? It comes out of the shoulder. Uh, can this arm also feel the presence of, of the carpet under your feet? Is there any connection from the carpet to your arm? Do your thoughts. 